Hi, I'm Jesper from the TouchDFX team. In this video, I'll tell you about two of the new features in the TouchDFX 4.24 release. The first feature is about image compression, more specifically image compression of RGB and ARGB images in 16, 24 and 32 bits. So just as for the widely used L8 image format, you are now able to compress your RGB and ARGB images as well. The way you do it is very similar to how you do it for the L8 images. Here on my screen I have a TouchDFX application, an empty application, just with a box as background. Uh, let me add a few images. So one here and one here. If I go to the image tab, I can see these two images here. They are in the default image format. I can overwrite this to say, let's say RAGB888. So I have alpha channel in this image. So I select this one. And now I have the option of compression, whether or not I, I want this activated. So I say, yes, the image will be compressed when I compile the project. If I want to see the compression rate for this image, I can go and have a look in the generated file. So here I have my project generated file images. It's also now find it was the ST logo. So here you have some information and it says here that it is compressed ARGB. And the ratio is, is here, so it is now only 14% of what the original image would have been. The same goes for the other one. Let's try that out as well. So compress it, generate code. Find it here. And it is 25.5%. The compression algorithm used is called quite okay. And it offers compression ratio at a very big range. So this depends on the image that you got. Compressing the images, of course, comes with the cost. And that cost is the rendering time. Compressed images take longer to um, render than a, an image in a, in a, in a simple RGB uh, format, since it can be transferred directly without any processing. The cost of deep compressing varies a lot and has a lot of factors that influence this. For example, if you have a very slow external flash where you store your image, but you have a very fast processing unit, well then reading the fewer byte but spending some time decompressing it can actually be more or less as quick as uh, it would be to uh, render the, the image in an RGB format. In the opposite case, if you have a very fast access to your flash but a slow processing unit, well then the penalty for decompressing uh, will often be, be, um, be higher. Um, but as said before, there's a lot of other factors uh, influencing this as well. So the best advice is to try it out on your hardware. See if you get the, the performance you need. Um, if you need compression at all, uh, if your flash is, uh, is limited, then this is very often a good compromise. You can, of course, read more on all of this in our documentation. One limitation I would like to mention is that for some widgets, for some operations, you cannot use compressed images. One good example here is texture mapping. If you are going to rotate, 3D rotate an image, it better not be compressed. Uh, the performance will be way too bad for this to, to, to be usable. So we do not allow compressed images in widgets like, for example, the texture mapper. The second feature I would like to show you is about a new widget. So the new widget is a QR code. Q 
QR codes are very popular and widely used in various applications. If you have a static QR code, meaning you want to show the same QR code each time, well then of course you can just create this as an image and use that. But very often you want to have a dynamic behavior here, dynamically generate a string that you want to encode as a QR code. And this is exactly what you can use uh, the QR code widget for. It has uh, some properties you can set. So there's uh, various versions of a QR code. The version means how much uh, information, how many bytes you can encode in, in the QR code. Scale, you can uh, increase the scale to make it uh, take up more uh, size on your screen. Beware, you cannot scale it freely because it has to be a square, of course. Um, here you can encode uh, whatever string you want. And there's also something in a QR code setting that is called error correction code, which is the amount of redundancy you put in to the, uh, to the image. The QR code showed here is a static one. Uh, but if you compile and run your application, it will encode the text you have written and you can well try and scan it with your phone and see uh, see that it, uh, it works. Beware that if you try to encode a string that uh, is too uh, too big for the QR version to hold, then you will not see the QR code. It will not be displayed on target. Uh, when you call that function to set the, the, the text uh, for the QR code, it will return a boolean uh, whether or not it uh, succeeded to encode it. So be aware of that when you uh, encode a new string in your application. Yes, that was the two new features that I would like to show you. Thank you for listening and hope you enjoy the 4.24 release.